Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be answering the question of how to place different prefabs when we're doing augmented reality placement with a plane manager and also ray casting. So I'm going to use a scene that I already have, but I'm going to modify it so that we can select through a UI which prefab to actually instantiate and place in the area where we're using the experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this plane detection and placement scene and we're going to be cloning it. And then I'll just call it plane detection and placement with UI multiple. I know it's pretty long, but it's going to answer a lot of the questions that you guys may have. And then what I'm going to do, just like I do on every other scene, I go to build settings and then we're going to be adding this as one of the ones that we are going to be building. And I think I have another plane one somewhere in here that we can we can put close to, yep, so, which is the one that I just cloned from. I, I like to keep things sorted. It just makes it a lot easier. All right, so now that I have that, the, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be, I, I need some cam, I need a canvas for instructions and also for selection. So I'm going to go to another scene. We're going to copy that and then go into this scene and then paste it. That way we don't need to start from scratch. And then we'll just change some of the instructions here. And in fact, we can use some of these buttons in here to toggle which prefab to instantiate so we can say prefab 1, prefab 2, prefab 3 and then we'll just give it an ID and also place a couple of prefabs in the resource, resources folder. So right now I have a resources folder in here. I have an AR blue, AR green and AR red. We can actually use those for what we're going to be doing. So we can just say in this one it's going to be, this is going to be the, let's see, let's just call it AR blue button. And then the next one is going to be AR green button. So this would be, you know, replacement if you needed to do something like this. And let's say that this was a helicopter or any other type of object, you can, you know, you can label as label them as such or, or just do your own implementation. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to say set AR blue. And then we'll do the same thing with all of these ones. This one is going to be set AR AR green and if I can type there we go and then this one is going to be set AR red excellent so now that we have those we can we can just use those for setting the prefabs that we're going to be that we're going to be needing and then these instructions here it's going to be you basically just going to be moving your phone around and then it's going to create a plane vertical and horizontal and once we find a plane we're going to be able to touch any anywhere in the planes that were constructed by the AR play manager and then instantiate the objects that we have we have set as selected and here in the header I'm going I'm going to say select it and we can just say by default we're gonna put the AR blue and then we'll change that label as we you know as we select the different options all right and then I think that's good and then I think one cool thing here that we can do is we can just say color and then we can just say blue we can just say actually it's color blue. I think this works. I haven't used this in a while, so let's see. Yep, I think that works. And then we'll just change that color based on the based on the selection. Okay, so we're starting with the blue. We have these instructions here. And we just say this is going to be instantiating. We can just call it multiple prefabs. Multiple placement of prefabs in AR. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then instructions. So this is correct. Move your phone around to map the area. Select the placement. Okay, so we're just going to change this. Select select which object you wish to instantiate by clicking, not clicking, touching one of the options below. Okay, and then I think that's I think that's enough. And then at this means. All right, so I think that's everything that we need to do as far as the UI. The next thing that I'm going to show you is we have, you know, the, the common components is going to be an AR session, an AR session origin. We're going to have our AR camera with, you know, the AR session origin. This is common practice. And then the AR plane manager with the visualizer. We're going to do detection on vertical planes and also horizontal planes. So this is going to be just defaults. AR Raycast Manager is required because the component that we're going to use is going to be the placement controller. And the 
one of the things that I want to do, I don't want to change this one because this is used by other scripts and other scenes. I'm going to just clone this one. So I'm just going to copy this script, rename it, and then we can just say with multiple. All right, and then I'll just rename it here as well with multiple. Excellent. And then one of the things that I need to do is I need to set the prefab that is currently selected. We're not going to be setting that through the, you know, through the inspector like this shows. Instead, we're going to be setting that through the UI. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be adding a new component, a new, a new meta. So a couple of things that I'm going to need as well. They're going to need, I'm going to need to bind the buttons that I added. So one of them is going to be, I'm going to have to do button and this one is going to be for the AR green button and then what I'll do is I'll just copy this multiple times and let me also add the serializable fill okay and I'll do that that and that and this one is going to be for red and this one is going to be for blue and if you hear rain it's because it's raining outside and but but I'm going to try hopefully it doesn't it doesn't affect the quality of the video but it's going to be air green air red air blue and then i'll just move these two components down because they're not the ones that we're going to be exposing excellent and then what i'll do here is I'll, i'm just going to add the all the listeners so i'm going to say air green button and then it's going to be on click a listener and then we'll just do the same thing with every color it's going to be red in the next one that i did was blue and then lastly we're going to do red and then I don't have a method yet, we're going to add it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say change prefab to, and then we're going to be passing in a string. So this is going to be the prefab name. Excellent. And then what I'll do here is I'll just do a lambda. And I know what each of them basically are going to need instantiating. So what I'm going to do is if you go back to Unity, and we look at the prefab folder, I have an AR blue, green, and red. So we're gonna keep the same name. So I'm just gonna say, you know, I want to call this meta, and then this one is gonna have the AR green. And I'm gonna basically do the same thing multiple times, except this one is gonna change to AR blue, and this one is gonna change to AR red. Excellent, so, so far so good. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to instantiate those. So to do that, we're gonna have to do something a little bit different than what we did before we're gonna have to set this prefab to be to be loaded from resources so we're just gonna say resources load and we're going to be loading a game object so i'm just gonna say this is gonna be the type and then it's gonna ask us for the for the location so we're gonna say prefab is gonna be the location forward slash the the id so i'm gonna use a string interpolation here that way we can just say prefab name and then I think that's that's good. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, if the place prefab for some reason is is null, I'm going to be you know telling the user about it so that you guys know that that didn't get loaded, it's a different name or something like that. So I just say debug.log. And then let's just go ahead and log an error so that it's more obvious that we're having an issue. And we can just say prefab with name and then Again, or dollar symbol at the beginning, and then we can just say prefab name could not be loaded, and then comma. Make sure you check the naming of your prefabs. Something like that. I think that that will give you a hint of what's happening. Okay, so we have the awake. We're binding to all these all these listeners, and we're calling these methods that are going to change the prefab. So let me just double check AR green, blue. So AR blue, green, and red. I think we're good. So let me go back into VS Code. And then, so so that's good. We have, we have what we need. So I think that's everything that we need to do. So what's gonna happen is by default, okay, so there's one thing that we need to do that I haven't done. We need to initialize this to something, right? So if you remember, if we go back to Unity, I, I said that the initial one was gonna be AR blue. So we need to make sure that we set that to AR blue. So what we're gonna do is at the beginning of everything, we're gonna we're gonna say this is gonna be set initial prefab, which is going to be calling the same method again, but we're gonna just call the AR blue directly. 
So this one is are gonna be executed on click, and then this one is just gonna be executed on the awake method. All right, so that's gonna be our default. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do here, if the place prefab is not null, so I'm just gonna do an else, then we're gonna be setting a, a text box that is gonna change the, the name of the object that is currently selected. So here I'm just gonna say private and then text, and then this is gonna be the selection text and we're also going to be making it serializable so that we can associate it through the inspector all right and this one it's going to be just text and i can just say select it just like i did in the but remember that i wanted to change the color of what of the one that was selected so we can do a couple of things let's let's not go ahead and do an else i'm just going to do i'm just going to do a switch i don't like using switch for some reason but but it's okay i think in this case and we can just do i haven't done a switch in a while so i think i remember the syntax okay so what we're going to do is we're going to add a case and we're going to say okay if they are blue then we're going to do this and i'll just do this multiple times and, and this is simple enough that we can just use uh we can just use a, a switch statement if you get you know a lot of logic make sure that you don't use because because it's going to become a code smell it's not recommended and then in this case, and then if, it, if it's something else, it's not gonna find it. So I think we're gonna be okay. And okay, so I think we're good there. And we can always we can always add a, a default. I think in this case, I'm just not gonna add it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is select it. If AR blue, we're gonna say color equal blue. And make sure that you leave the equal symbol in there. And this one is gonna be AR blue. Or we can do it. We can do something fancier, and then just do what I did before with the string interpolation. And then we're just gonna do that, and make sure that you close the color. And I think that should do what we need. So if it's AR blue, we're gonna fall in here, change the color to blue, and then let me go back. And then if it's another color, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. That's going to perfect. And I think I think that works and then red and then this one is gonna be this one is gonna be green excellent so so if we're setting initial prefab we're gonna go through the same exercise we're gonna get you know some the prefab from resources from the resources folder where the folder is prefab we're gonna pass in the name we're gonna check to see if it's null we're gonna go into our switch statement and determine which which object it is and then based on that we can change the color and I think that should be everything that we need the, the last thing that I'm gonna do here is I wanna make sure that I don't keep, I don't, I don't throw an exception if this guy hasn't been set. So what I'm gonna do is if this one is null, then I'm just gonna return. And then hopefully by the time that you, you hit the button that is selected, it's gonna throw you a, a debug error and then you'll know what you did wrong. I wanna do this so that we don't get an exception and the, the application crashes. So, Okay, so I think so good. Everything is here. And then let me just remove the using statement that we're not using. I'm gonna go back into Unity. And then the last thing that we're gonna need to do is just basically bind everything in here. The other thing that I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need a dismiss button so that we can dismiss the. So I'm gonna need a dismiss here button. And then I'm also gonna need the uh, a reference to that game object, which is gonna be the panel. Welcome panel. And I believe I have something like this already. So let me see if I can, if I can just steal that so we don't have to code it again. And yeah, I have something similar. So I'm just gonna copy that. And I've been doing that so many times that I think it's time for me to just make it like a, like a little core feature. And then what I'll do here is I'll just grab this guy right here and we can just remove this double awake. And then we can just bind to this meta. Okay, so we're gonna, have a dismiss button is we're going to intersect the on click at a listener dismiss and then set it to active and then the last thing that i'll do here as well is if i go to the update if this is null or if the welcome panel game object active cell meaning that the object is active then i'm going to return i want to do that just so that the somebody uh, the person who is doing the experience can read the instructions before they try to they try to use it all right, so I think I got everything that I need. And then the last thing that we'll need to do is just basically change 
the object that we have on the in the air session origin to be the new one that we're working with. So this one is going to be the placement controller with multiple. And we're going to be adding the references to the bounds. So the blue one, it's going to be associated with the blue. Green one, it's going to be associated with the green one. And then lastly, the red one, it's going to be associated with the red one. Also, the dismiss button is going to have to be associated. Welcome panel, which is going to be this panel. And then the selection text, it's going to be this header. And we can just call it, let's call it selected or selection, selection text. Just so that everything matches and you don't you get a clear you get a clear picture of what we're dealing with and then this should be that piece and i think that's everything that we need to do in this video let me just double check everything so we added buttons so that we can control which prefab is currently selected we also added a welcome area so that we could basically instruct the user we also have a prefab that is currently selected we have an AR raycast manager so that we can detect if we are if we have a hit with one of the planes that were constructed. We have basically bind into all of our bounds and also the air recast manager. We have a method that changes the prefab. We have a method that basically determines if we're touching an area. And then lastly, we are also checking to make sure that the air recast manager has a recast with the touch position with one of the planes that we constructed. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know.